So picture this. You, cruising across the Australian outback, sun in your face, in your EV, then bam, that little voice in your head pops up and says, uh-oh, where's the nearest charger? It's that charging anxiety, right? It takes on a whole new meaning when you're talking about those epic distances between towns. Absolutely. But what's so cool is that what seemed impossible just a few years ago is now, well, totally doable. Yeah. And to prove it, we're diving into the wild world of Outback EV, charging with AUSY8. You know, that Aussie couple documenting their crazy figure eight EV road trip around Australia on YouTube. Their channel is a goldmine. And what's striking is how much it highlights the, the resourcefulness of those early EV adopters. Oh, yeah. Remember those early videos? It's like they're packing enough cables and adapters to stock a hardware store, just hoping one will work. It's a perfect illustration of how much the EV charging landscape has changed, even just in the last few years. I mean, they were lugging around those granny chargers for standard outlets, three-phase plugs for campsites. Don't forget that heavy-duty extension cord. They weren't afraid to get creative. Exactly. Adaptability was key. But it really makes you appreciate how far things have come. Big time. And, you know, that brings us to something super important for EV travel, especially in the outback. Energy efficiency. I love how AUSY8 break this down with that light bulb analogy. So simple, but so effective. Really. Totally. They basically say, think about the energy it takes to run a 100-watt light bulb plus a dimmer 68-watt bulb for a whole hour. That's roughly what their EV uses to go one kilometer. Suddenly, those watt hours per kilometer figures make sense. It clicks, doesn't it? You start to grasp the real-world impact of your driving, the terrain, even the weather. For sure. And that kind of awareness is gold when you're planning a massive outback trek. Speaking of which, let's talk about how AUSY8 handled charging speeds on their 1,200-kilometer Nullarbor crossing. Ah, the Nullarbor. Now that's a real test. And it's where the difference between those DC fast chargers, like a quick energy shot for your EV. Versus the more, shall we say, relaxed pace of AC charging. It becomes very, very clear. Yeah. It's like finding a fast charger out there is like discovering an oasis in the desert, but... But they're still pretty rare in those remote parts. So true. Which means AC charging, while slower, is a lifesaver. Especially if you plan your stops around it, right? Exactly. Overnight stays, meal breaks. It all factors in. And AUSY8's journey really highlights this. They use both types of charging on the nuller bore, showing just how important flexibility is. Plus, they actually found a silver lining to those longer AC charging times. Oh, absolutely. It forces you to slow down, enjoy the scenery, savor the journey, right? Exactly. Outback EV driving is about embracing the ride, not just rushing to the destination. And hey, that brings up something interesting. Remember that three-phase plug-in camo wheel we talked about earlier? The one that wasn't on any official EV charging map? That's where our friend PlugShare comes in handy. PlugShare is the real MVP in the Outback. For real. It's like this incredible community of EV drivers, all sharing updates on charging spots, what kind of plugs they have, even those brutally honest reviews. You know, like, don't bother during peak season or best view from a charging station I've ever seen. Those first-hand insights are gold especially when you're in the middle of nowhere and information is scarce. Exactly. It shows just how crucial it is to rely on real-world experiences, especially as the charging infrastructure is still evolving. It's a team effort out there. But sometimes, you know, it's not just about finding the existing chargers. It's about the ingenuity of the people in these remote communities. Speaking of ingenuity, get ready for this. Have you ever heard of CHIP? Oil-powered EV charging. Wait a second. Chip oil? Like the stuff they use for french fries. You heard right. It's a classic example of that Aussie give it a go attitude. You know? Now that is thinking outside the box. Right. <laughs> a roadhouse owner figures, hey, instead of throwing out this used cooking oil, why not use it to power an EV? That's amazing. And it speaks to this broader movement towards sustainable solutions popping up in the most unexpected places. Talk about turning trash into treasure. <laughs> or in this case, use cooking oil into electric dreams. Who knows? Maybe those are the most eco-friendly fries you'll ever eat. But hold on to your hats, folks, because our deep dive into Outback EV charging is far from over. You know, it strikes me that hitting the Outback, EV or not, it's always been about more than just, you know, the car itself. It's the people you meet out there, those chance encounters that really make it special. It's true. And it's something AUSY8 captures so well in their videos. There's this real sense of community among EV drivers out there. Right. Like they're all in on this secret sharing tips, helping each other out. Exactly. It's like finding your tribe in the most unexpected place. Absolutely. And it just goes to show that EV adoption 
it's not just about the tech, yeah. right? It's about the people, especially in those areas where it's still pretty new. For sure. And sometimes you come across these individuals who just embody that that pioneering outback spirit. Oh, totally. Speaking of which, remember those crowdsourced chargers we were talking about? Mm-hmm. Like that one uh, fueled by culinary creativity. You mean the chip oil charger. Hard to forget that one. Exactly. Well, get this. AUSY8 actually met the guy behind one of these setups. No way. Yeah. He calls himself Outback EV Hunter. Been living in Alice Springs forever, apparently. And he is passionate about EVs. Outback EV Hunter. That's amazing. Yeah. What's his story? So imagine this. He's like a walking encyclopedia of Outback EV charging. But instead of books, it's all, you know, grease stains and that glint in his eye. I love it. Oh, he's constantly tinkering, pushing for new charging stations, spreading the EV gospel. He even convinced AUSY8 to turn their whole road trip into a figure eight just so they could swing by Alice Springs twice and talk to him some more. Wow. Now that's dedication. Right. And it's that kind of infectious enthusiasm that pushes those boundaries, you know. Mm -hmm. makes people realize that EVs in the Outback, it's not just a pipe dream. Absolutely. He's proof that changing how people think about EVs, it's not just happening in some fancy lab. It's happening on the ground, thanks to people like him. 100%. So let's bring it back to our listener for a sec. Say they're itching to embark on their own Outback EV adventure. What are the key takeaways? Aside from packing a few extra charging cables, of course. Well, first things first, charging infrastructure, even though it's getting way better, it's still a bit unpredictable out there. Yeah, that's something AUSY8 learned firsthand. One day you might stumble on a state-of-the-art fast charger. Next day, it's back to basics. It's all part of the adventure. Exactly. Being adaptable is key. Having a plan B and maybe even a plan C, whether that's a trusty granny charger for emergencies or knowing which roadhouses are EV friendly. And don't forget that good sense of humor. Crucial. Because out in the outback, you're going to encounter some situations that make you just shake your head and laugh and go, only in Australia. And that's what makes it so special, right? Yeah. The outback throws you curveballs, teaches you to think on your feet. Exactly. It's about the journey as much as the destination. Right. Totally. And who knows? Maybe our listener will be the one to start the next big sustainable charging revolution. That's what I'm hoping. Speaking of sustainability, let's zoom out for a second and think big picture. Yeah. As EVs become more popular, more charging stations pop up across the outback. What does this mean for tourism in these, you know, these amazing but fragile environments? I mean, we're already seeing those first baby steps, right? Crowdsourced chargers popping up, biodiesel innovations, even our chip oil hero. It's like the Outback is this this testing ground for the future. It's pretty exciting when you think about it. Imagine those classic Outback roadhouses transforming into like these eco-friendly havens. Oh, I love that. Solar panels powering everything, EV drivers chilling out, grabbing a bite from local farmers. Instead of just, you know, trying to minimize their impact, Tourists could actually make the Outback even better. Exactly. Picture community-owned charging hubs, maybe even wind turbines harnessing that desert wind. Okay, now I'm getting pumped. Those vast distances, they become like opportunities. We could create a whole new model for sustainable tourism. Imagine telling your mates back home, yeah, I charged my car with Outback sunshine. Or... Hold my beer, I'm going to top up the battery with this leftover cooking oil. There's something poetic about it. <laughs> totally. It's it, like this future where sustainability is just like ingrained in the whole Outback experience. And it's driven by folks who get it, you know, the ones who understand that protecting these incredible landscapes, it's not just a nice idea. It's essential. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. A sneak peek into the wild world of Outback EV charging, where Aussie ingenuity meets that wide open road. It's a journey full of surprises, but one thing's for sure, with a little planning, a flexible attitude, and maybe plug share by your side. You're in for one heck of an adventure. And who knows, you might just inspire the next wave of Outback innovation. Thanks for diving in with us. As I alluded to in the introduction, uh, parts of it were actually AI generated. Um, that's the audio portion. Um, the video was um, lovingly handcrafted by myself. Yeah, I wanted to give you um, an idea of, of how that audio was generated. Um, so it was using a tool called Notebook um, LM, which is a Google product. It's currently in experimental phase. So this is the main page for it. Um, it has this concept of notebooks, which is where you um, kind of uh, do study and research on a particular topic. So down here, uh, 
Google have provided some sample ones around the light bulb, um, and up here are some ones that I've done personally. So let's start a new notebook. Um, so in this one, we're going to focus on electric cars. So I've got a couple of articles here that I'm um, going to reference. One is the main Wikipedia entry, and the other is the Australian Government National Electric Vehicle Strategy. Uh, so what we can do is grab the URL for the first one, come over here to our notebook, and down here you can see that for adding a source, you can either use links to Google Drives, or links to websites, YouTube videos, or you can paste in your own text. So let's go ahead and do website, and I'll paste in the URL for the Wikipedia entry. And then down here, or sorry, here on the left-hand side, you can see a list of sources. So I'll go ahead and add another one, and I'll grab the strategy. That's a website, even though it's actually a PDF. Uh, so it'll crunch on that for a few seconds. And once it's done that, so you can actually you know, enter many more sources. I'll just stick with those two. Um, immediately you get the summary of um, the data that it's um, ingested, um, and then some ideas on how you can work with it. You can either create an FAQ or a study guide, a briefing document, or you can just ask it questions, which is kind of the same as ChatGPT, but it's focusing here on these two particular sources. Um, so I could ask a question like, you know, when was the first electric car invented? Um, and it will go away and use those sources. The Wikipedia one does talk about uh, the early history of electric cars, and so that's what it's referencing here. Yeah, funny. Electric cars were actually invented in the 1800s. Um, so these little numbers here are references to where it found that piece of information. So this here you can see is the Wikipedia article. Um, so that's the sort of basis of it. Um, if you click this notebook guide here, go back to this, um, you know, these suggestions. The thing that's kind of interesting and I think might be unique to the Google tool here is this audio overview. Uh, which is how I generated the audio for the video you just watched. Um, so it will now generate an overview of the sources. So if I click generate here, it will now go away um, and yeah, generate a unique, um, essentially podcast of, of these two sources. But let me show you what that looks like for a different source. So here for the coach, um, she has posts on her blog. So I've actually grabbed three blog posts that she did and added them as three sources. Um, and if we go and look at the notebook guide, you can see here that I've already generated an audio overview. If I click load, um, you will see, we'll, we'll give it a bit of a bit of a listen. Um, the I here talks about some of the limitations um, of this service. So it is experimental. What you'll find is it's always the same two voices. So I don't think people are going to be commercializing this version. Um, the other thing is you can't edit the transcript. So as you probably saw in the version that I generated, it kept calling me AUSY8, whereas I prefer Aussie 8. Um, but it's still, I think for a experimental service, it's pretty amazing. Anyway, let's give this... Um, okay, so... Picture this. Version A, listen. You're prepped, you're confident, and you are walking into that interview room ready to absolutely nail your SES interview. And we are here to give you the playbook to do just that. Exactly. In this deep dive, we... So yeah, I find this service fascinating, and I think you know, it's only early days. Imagine where it, um, where it heads to next. But yeah, I'm curious to get your comments on what you thought of the video um, with the AI generated voiceover. Um, and yeah, I guess be careful out there. I think AI um, will be coming for some of our content and potentially for some, some jobs, but it still is early days. Anyway, stay safe out there. Cheers.